What we've got is the US and European countries urging restraint on the part of Israel. They're saying don't antagonise Iran further. What you need to do is to isolate Iran here. But with the commentary from, Iran from Israeli officials to the very top is very clear. They feel that they have to retaliate in some fashion against Iran for this weekend attack, which is the first direct attack from Iranian soil on Israel. And they say that they have to respond in some fashion. What that looks like is very unclear. When it happens, is very unclear. There's a wide range of possibilities here from a direct attack, as you say, from Israel on Iran. That would not be unprecedented, but that's one option for them, targeting military sites, perhaps um, even nuclear sites in Iran. Of course, there's a lot of concern about Iran's nuclear program. Or does it go for something instead, like going for one of Iran's proxies in the region? We're talking about the Houthis in Yemen. We're talking about Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon. Do they go through one of those proxies to retaliate? Do, the, do they do something potentially even in the cyberspace? There's a lot of options here from fairly small ball responses really to something that would risk potentially setting off a further tit for tat with Iran. And that really is the concern you see from the US, Europe and others is that do you get into this era where we're basically back and forth constantly with strikes between Israel and Iran? And as you say, that's exactly what the U.S. does not does not want to see. So where does that leave the position of the Biden presidency and those in Washington, D.C.? Well, it leaves them in a really awkward position because, of course, the U.S. is a key ally of Israel militarily, economically, strategically, you name it. And they've said they're steadfast in their support for Israel, especially, you know, in, in terms of responding to Hamas in Gaza um, in support against them, against on, on, on Iran. But, you know, it can only go so far. There's a deep, deep sense of unease that's going on in the U.S. about the possibility of that wider conflict. So they're caught between their need to support Israel on the one hand Hand and also their concern about a wider conflict because if that does happen not only do you potentially hit things like oil you know you, you hit supply of some key commodities but you risk pulling the US in increasingly militarily to that conflict and that's something that no one in the US wants coming up to an election so they're in a really awkward position where they're urging Israel to be restrained but Israel is saying well we're going to do what we need to do in this minute. How is all of this playing into the, to the debate domestically, at least politically, in the U.S. around support for, for both Israel uh, and, and Ukraine? We're hearing of, of reports that the House may move on, on something by the end of this week. It, it, how likely is that at this point? Well, it does sound there's now momentum to push towards those separate bills. Basically, what the Speaker is trying to do is separate out the aid for Ukraine and the aid for Israel, because there's possibly more support for supporting Israel in this moment, sending fresh aid there. Of course, the US has said they won't stop sending Israel weapons or supplying them militarily in this minute. Of course, the aid for Ukraine is, is a lot more fraught. It's been bogged down for months now in Congress, and there's a real sense of fatigue in the part of the US about continuing to supply Ukraine with that aid. And so what they're trying to do now is separate those out. It does seem as though politically there's more support for Israel in this minute um, and especially allowing them mm. to be able to defend themselves against Iran. So that will probably get through easier, I would say, than the aid for Ukraine.